live video, D, live DIY video here at Home Talk, and happy Star Wars Day! Um, if you didn't know, today is May 4th, and that is Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. So to celebrate, I've got a Star Wars inspired thrift store upcycle project for you today. Um, my name is Julie. I'm a blogger over at Julie Measures. I'm a craft and DIY blogger, and I'm here in uh, North Texas where it's gorgeous and like 75 today. So as you're tuning in, let me know where you're tuning in from. Um, I'd love to hear where everybody's watching from and crafting. So today, um, if you didn't get it by the headline, um, we are taking this globe to the dark side. Um, that would be the dark side of the force for the Star Wars um, fans out there. Um, so we've got a globe um, and we're going to get it, give it a Star Wars kind of makeover. Um, so you can pick up your globe in a few different places. Um, I would recommend a thrift store if you can find it. Um, globes are kind of trendy right now, so sometimes they are hard to find, um, but you can get fairly inexpensive ones just at the store as well. Um, but I'd love to know, I love thrift store upcycles. So our um, giveaway question today to win a Home Talk tote bag is what is your favorite um, thing that you've made from a something you found at the thrift store. So let me know, inspire all of us um, for that giveaway today. So to start our project, I am going to disassemble my globe. So this is an eight inch globe and it is a black and silver globe, um, just cause that's what I could find, but it's going to be completely covered up. So you can get any color um, that you can find. Um, there's not a right or wrong one for this. I did like that this one had this silver um, stand with it. Um, I thought that fit our project today really well. I'd like to say hi to Zoe who's uh, watching from Athens, Greece today. Hi! And my husband's here with the camera today helping out and did a lot of help. Um, with this project today. So I have lots of Star Wars fans at my house So my kids were really excited today that we're doing a Star Wars craft if you can see kind of around me in my office here um, I asked one of my teenagers to help with some decorations for today's video. So he brought me um, BB-8 and I couldn't tell you what ship that is, but a ship a ship um, on my shelf behind me There's some things he tossed in um, so yeah, let me know, kind of too, as we're going on, what's your favorite Star Wars character? I've got my Star Wars t-shirt on today. So you can see my twin really likes, my oldest twin likes BB-8. So that's what he brought me that. Okay, so we've got our globe. So the first thing we need to do is spray paint our globe. Now I am inside, but I have windows open um, so we can get some good ventilation. And I am using some gray um, primer spray paint. Um, I liked the spray paint better. I didn't want to paint it with paint. I didn't want to get my globe too wet um, since it is basically paper and cardboard. Um, so I thought spray paint would work really well. So I've got a box here for my little um, paint booth, right? So we can do this inside. So I'm going to spray it and then we'll go on to kind of one of the other the next step and come back. Obviously, since we've got a globe that's round, I have to kind of spray paint it in sections and I've got to make it want to not roll away. Okay. So, I've got this here. See, this is why we do this with help. My husband says I should put it in the cap for the spray paint. He's the painter at my house. So, okay, so I'm just covering this with my gray primer and, then, and it doesn't have to be really thick because we are covering it more, but I just want to give it kind of a light coat. Okay, so that's that and I'm going to kind of push that behind me yeah I think all my kids today are wearing Star Wars shirts 
Um, it's even, it's spirit week at school for my youngest, and I think he's supposed to be wearing a team shirt today, but he's got a Star Wars shirt on. But I think BB-8 is right now the favorite character at our house. Um. Hi, Paula, from uh, the Scottish Highlands. Hello. Okay, so as we're, we'll kind of go back and forth in this next step. Um, so while that's drawing a little bit, this is the printable for our globe. So this is a free printable on my website, Julie Measures. And we're going to cut this all out and put it on our globe. So you do not have to have fabulous artistic ability to create. Oh, I guess we should talk about that. We're making the Death Star, if you hadn't gotten that yet. A Death Star globe. So I mentioned our globe is going to the dark side. We're making a Death Star globe. So to make this easy for those of us who are not... May I interject? Yes. This is uh, this printable will work for an eight inch globe. If it's bigger or smaller than that, it'll have to be adjusted accordingly. Okay, so I'm gonna do some of my cuts with scissors and then I have an X-Acto knife for some of these more intricate parts of our, our cutting. So I saw a few different ideas for a Death Star. So I guess I should say we have a lamp in our hall downstairs that we joke looks like a Death Star. Um, it's an Ikea lamp. And we've got tons of Star Wars toys and uh, we used to have tons of costumes. So, the kids are getting, my kids are getting a little bit bigger though, so it's fun to kind of branch off from toys and go into the things like this that are more just decorative. Janice likes the thrift store. She says she's made jewelry, shells, bird bath, chimes, wow. dot, dot, dot. All the things, that's what I like. I've got a... Um, painting that I kind of upcycled, I guess, in my hallway that was one of my most popular on my website crafts that I did with a thrift store painting that was kind of torn up and beat up and I gave it a little bit of fresh paint and put a quote on it. And yeah, I think you can find so many great treasures at the thrift store. It does take patience. But, they're there. Okay, I'm trying to decide the best way to do this. I'm just gonna finish cutting out the outside, which is really what I started to do. And then I got, I was trying to figure out how much I could cut with the scissors, but. Karen just... says she likes to get the old books. Yes. We have done that before. I have, I've got, um. Oh, it's hidden behind a Star Wars ship at the moment, but I've got a book here on my shelf that's a um, an old book that I turned into a clock that was one of my favorite um, thrift store projects. Um, it's an old, like, textbook that's out of date. Um, I always try. Sometimes people get very upset when I cut up books. I really do love books. Um... But, you know, out-of-date textbooks, I figure, are, are perfect for crafting with. Okay, so I've got my X-Acto knife, and I am cutting away the white space. So if you missed any of the beginning, I've got a globe that we are taking to the dark side by transforming it into the Death Star. So this is a free printable you can get on my website, Julie Measures. Um, it is sized for my globe, which is an 8-inch globe. Um, so if you have a different size globe, you'll need to scale that printable either up or down, depending on the size of your globe. But it seems like 8-inch globes is a fairly standard size for the globes. So hopefully that's something that you can find and eight inches 
refers to the height of the globe, not the circumference. The diameter. The diameter. There the, we go. The That's the word I'm looking the for. The circumference is actually over 25 inches. Yes. So this is a three-page printable that we did just on standard 8.5-11 paper, um, but it's three pages to get the circumference that you need to go around that eight inch globe. So we started spray painting our, our globe and now I am cutting out the design so that you do not have to be a world-class painter. You just have to cut things and glue them because that was a lot easier for me. So, my husband was very nice and designed this printable for me so that we could all do this craft and not have to have great artistic skill. So I'm just cutting this. As you can see, it's kind of a curved, um, the piece is all curved so that when they go around the globe, they bend, right? Okay. Just so you can visualize how this is all going to come together. You so. could also use this if you're trying to teach your kids cartography and how to turn a flat piece of paper into a round object or vice versa. So one of my kids, I homeschool one of my ninth graders and we're doing geography this year. And I made him watch a video the other day about some of the problems with cartography and how difficult it is to accurately depict a round globe into a flat map. And then he looked at me like, Mom, I already know that. So I thought I was teaching him something new. It's nice when our kids are already ahead of the game. So I got, um, I said, the globe you can purchase online, you can get at um, I've seen them at toy stores, at superstores. If you can find them at a thrift store, that would be um, my recommendation. That would be the most um, cost-effective choice, especially since we're crafting with it and not using it as a globe. Um, but I do know that globes are kind of trendy right now. So if you can't find one, um, there are other options. Don't forget we are doing a giveaway, so let me know what you've made from thrift stores um, so we can all be here to inspire each other and craft together. And let me know what your favorite Star Wars character is. Like I said, my kids really like BB-8. We've got this little, like, robot one whose head fell off. Um that my youngest, it was actually his Christmas gift a few years ago, but, you know, I have all boys, so they share really all the presents. Anyway, his dad, or my videographer today, took BB-8 to work to show his coworkers, and my youngest child came home from school in tears because his BB-8 wasn't at home where he thought it was supposed to be. Okay, so this is page one of our Thing that we're cutting out so you can kind of see how that's going to fold and bend so we want to come back to our globe um it's tacky now where i've already sprayed it so i can touch it we can spin it around and i can spray it some more and i'm getting i oversprayed in one spot i'm getting a little bit of paint on myself so i'm gonna flip this try to cover some areas that I didn't get before. So we're kind of going back and forth between painting and cutting as we do the prep work for our globe. And because we are covering this with paper, um, if you don't, if it's not completely solid um, from painting, it's okay because it will mostly be covered, but there will be some seams um, and so the gray just helps those blend in, especially if you've got a bright colored globe. Um, you could kind of see there that mine was um, black with silver. And then mine came on this silver base. 
if you if yours did not come on a silver base some of them are like that bright blue the bright blue like the plastic globes um, and so if your base is a bright color you might also want to spray the base since our globe is going to be gray um, you might not want the bright color base with that so you could paint it you could spray paint it um, silver or black or whatever color you think wants to go I printed this the printable today in black and white um, it is also available it's a color PDF on my website um, so if you print it in color it's kind of a light bluish gray um, so you have some options I'll let the designers gonna speak up for a minute <laughs> Shannon those are Ewoks I like the Ewoks too mm. Those are fun. We have um, the yeah episodes four, five, and six. I guess and seven. Kelly, the Earth may be flat, but the Death Star is most certainly round. So we are. If you missed any of the beginning, we're using a globe. We're taking it to the dark side, and transforming it into the Death Star to celebrate Star Wars Day which is today. I love a good pun, so may the fourth be with you. May the force, may the fourth. We've always done Star Wars Day at our house, at least for the last several years. We all wear Star Wars t-shirts and just have a fun time with it. But this year was exciting because my first grader is starting to understand puns, and so we could explain to him the may the fourth, may the force thing, and he was highly amused. So it was fun to explain to him why he's wearing a Star Wars shirt today with his brothers. Instead of just telling him to put on a Star Wars shirt so we can take a picture. I don't know about you, my boys don't always want to be photographed. Okay, so I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut out the space between the parts that are staying. Um, so if you haven't let me know yet what your favorite thrift store craft is, don't forget to do that for the giveaway for a home tote, tote bag today. Um, they, we always do uh, giveaways with the live videos here at Home Talk. I think the cutting part is the most zen, relaxing part. So it's nice that it's the cuts aren't difficult in any way. We're just... Making little V's. Terry asks, does that mean that tomorrow is Revenge of the Fifth? I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> I'm telling you, we are all about the puns at my house. <laughs> and I love having teenagers now because they come up with their own puns. Okay. Yes. I've decided yes, tomorrow is Revenge of the Fifth day. Thank you for that. Okay, so I'm still cutting. My globe is hopefully drying in the little paint box we made it so we can do this inside today. I do have windows open for anyone who's concerned about me spray painting inside my house. It's a very big space as well. It is. This is our, my office slash our homeschooling room slash all the things. Victoria asks why you're not using scissors. Um, so up here at the top, if you zoom in, it just gets really narrow. So with the X-Acto knife, I can come up a lot higher to do this cut than I could with my scissors. As I slide over a little bit. So it's I a little can... faster. For me, this was working better. A minute ago, I was trying to use my scissors. And it just wasn't, it like, wasn't as smooth. I like Julia's idea. She, she gets picture frames at the thrift store. Oh, I did that. If you saw my video last week here at Home Talk, um, I did, I kind of did a picture frame. I turned it into a um, hanging 
faux succulent garden, but I do like that. They have some great frames at the thrift store. I got a really pretty kind of gilded one that would have been much um, more expensive to do anywhere else. Okay, so there's number two, and I would like to point out that these are all different. And then this one, our last one, does have obviously the dish on it. Is that the right word? Somebody with more Star Wars knowledge than me can correct me. Sounds good to me. Um, now, um, you could make this more complicated. I was like giving options, guys. Um, so my one of my teenagers was unhappy that the dish isn't actually concave. If you would like your dish to actually be concave, you could cut a hole and put a kind of like a bowl or something inside and glue it to make that actually concave. I did not do that for each of you. I'm sorry. I wanted this to be something fun and quick that you could do even with your kids to celebrate Star Wars Day. And I was a little afraid of drilling into my globe since I only have a limited number of them and that it would fall apart and I'd have to go find more globes. So, but if you want to try that, let me know because I want to see how it goes. Okay, so let's check on our still a little. Okay, we're going to cut more. Well, that dries a little bit more. I took it outside to dry yesterday and I'm sure that sped up the drying process than when it's trying to hang out inside the box. So we'll just keep cutting. Um, okay, so we had a vote for Ewoks. I do like the Ewoks. And I have seen the four, five, and six episodes way more than I've seen any of the other ones. We own those and my kids watch them quite often. In fact, this morning my teenager, the one that I homeschool, has decided that he needs to watch at least some of all the Star Wars videos that we own today to celebrate. A couple years ago, I'm trying to think now, over Christmas they decided to watch all of the movies that were out at the time, which was six of them and have a marathon and see if they could watch them in one day. I think they got through like four movies and then they got burned out. <laughs> but they were very methodical about it. They, um, you know, kind of planned out, I want to say it was New Year's Eve is what it was. So they tried to figure out, okay, we want, you know, the last movie to stop a little before midnight so we can count down. So each movie is, you know, however long, let's add them all up. That's when we need to start. I was very impressed by their, by their movie marathon planning. Okay, so we're working on our last cutout. If you missed this, this is a free printable on my blog. It's to fit an eight inch globe to turn it into the Death Star. Um, just visit Julie Measures. And you can print this, it's three pages. If you have a different sized globe, you will have to replay with the sizing. Um, the best way is probably just to play with it till it fits the diameter of your, not the diameter, the circumference of your globe. But this is to fit an eight inch globe. It's three pages, it just prints on standard eight and a half by 11 paper so that you can print it out, cut it out, and then in a minute, we're gonna put it on our globe. What's great is by the time you're done cutting, then your paint will be dry, so you don't really have to wait yes, any it's, longer. It's really, I love doing these videos here at Home Talk too because we do it start to finish. So you see the entire process, exactly how long it takes, um, that this is, you know, a pretty quick craft, and you get the 
the payout of the end on how it turns out. And yes, because, and there's really no downtime, like my husband said. So we're painting or we're cutting, and then hopefully they finish about the same time. So I'm pulling out the last pieces of my... Hi, Richelli from Tel Aviv. Hello. I love hear where, hearing where everybody's from. Okay. So there is number three on our um, thing. And you know what else I was thinking about was... I said, you know, globes are kind of trendy right now. So if you've done something else with the globe, let me know that too. Maybe we'll do some more fun globe projects. Okay. So there's our globe and it's painted well enough for what we're doing. For being painted inside in my box. So, as I said, the great thing about this is that because we are covering it up, it doesn't have to be perfect. because you won't really see the whole thing. I'm gonna knock all the things over. Kind of push that out of the way. So here's our globe. Um, if you had a really bright colored one, you might want to be more thorough um, just so those bright colors don't come through. But for today, this is what we got. Okay, so I've got a giant glue stick and I'm gonna use it to attach my paper. So I'm going to line it up with the equator. It's very handy that the Death Star is also, you know, round. So I can take this line that's on here and line it up with my equator and then I'll fold it around. And you can kind of see, you know, if the, if whatever, they don't line up perfectly, by the glow being gray, it makes those seams um, less noticeable. And the paint, I feel like, especially if it's still a little kind of tacky, it's gonna actually help the paper stick. So, I'm gonna go down the middle here on my paper and line it up with my globe. And I'm gonna be real honest with you guys, yesterday, we were very slow and thorough when we did this. So there is a finished one. Um, but if I'm a little hasty today and it's not perfect, it's because I don't want this to take forever. And really my seven year old has already laid claim to this and told me that he wants to play with it. So he can play with the one that's not perfect. <laughs> He was very disappointed yesterday when I would not let him play with the one that I needed to show you guys as a finished one. He was very upset with me that I would not, that it cannot be his toy. So he will get to have this as his toy when he comes home from school today. So I'm just going one at a time and laying the pieces down. And I will go over this, you'll see in a minute, but this is just to kind of attach it. So, and you can see as they curve, they all come together by cutting out that space. This is how an actual globe is made. Yes. I watched a video the other day of people making globes. It was really cool. I also liked the video I watched where it showed that how flat globe or flat maps are all wrong. So we need more. I'll have to get some more actual globes that I don't paint and cover up. So if you haven't, if you've done some crafts with globes, let me know. Um, or if you just collect globes. I have a couple girlfriends who just collect globes and have them on shelves at their house. Um, 
as decoration. Okay, so I'm going around, and I did do the Cindy is basically dish asking first. why you're using the stick glue versus other options. Um, I, I, I am going to use Mod Podge in a minute, you'll see. Um, so I could take my time, and so that the paper doesn't wrinkle as much by using a wet option like Mod Podge to start with. This was great debate as we were making the initial... Um, Death Star about what to use to stick it down and this worked really well to use the glue stick and then if I need to pull it up and stick it back it just gave me some flexibility as I'm putting these curved pieces around my globe and then we'll go back and seal it okay now is when I have to ask the designer a question I don't think it matters but he's right here does it matter what order I do these in? It doesn't so necessarily do. matter what order, but there is a top and a bottom. And the only way you can tell is the equator line is dark on one side and lighter on the other side. So for Straight. nitpicky people like me, I would notice if you swapped it. You okay. may not. I said, so when I told him, I was like, I want to make a Death Star out of a globe. How do we do that? I think is probably how I phrased that question. <laughs> Not how do I do that, how do we do that? It's nice having somebody that'll craft with me. And Alina's asking, what if my globe's a slightly different size? So you can match up that line right there. Yeah. So if your globe is a different size, if it's bigger, then you'll just wanna play with scaling it bigger. Um, because it prints to the eight and a half, 11 paper, um, that might require some, it might require extra paper because um, it would print. Obviously one sheet, if you enlarged it, then would print across multiple papers, but. Yeah, eight and a half by 11 is the largest, or, or an eight inch globe is the largest that you can still use a normal eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper for. Um, so if you're doing a smaller one, then you could just scale it smaller on your printer um it will probably just take some trial and error this is billowing up a little bit okay so i'm still just gluing these um pretty close to each other around um there are a few little spots but you know if you're doing this slowly, which I'm not going as slow as I did, as we did yesterday. I won't say I, I'll say we. My husband and I did this together yesterday. Um, you know, you could be more methodical. Here, I'll try to turn it so it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. So, and part of it too, part of this top part um, when we put our globe back together, we'll get covered up a little bit by the washer that sits on top. But we are gluing our globe, our Death Star. This is definitely an ambitious project. <laughs> but it's fun. And if you've got Star Wars fans... Um, it would make a great, you know, decoration for a bedroom, um, to sit on a shelf. I said, my seven-year-old has already determined he's going to play with it. He wants me to take it off the stand um, so he can play with it. And really, you know, I mean, if you're getting your globe at a thrift store and then the decoration is just some spray paint and paper, um, you know, this is not an expensive DIY toy for your kid to have a Star Wars thing to play with and have a centerpiece for their, whatever, their toys to rally around. Okay, so we are two thirds done. We're gonna glue on our last piece and then we will start the finishing work on our Death Star. So when I attach this, 
The first thing I do is just glue down the center and then I line it up with, hold on, I'm gonna turn this around. As we just learned, the those lines on the equator match up. So I'm trying to match it up to the other paper and run it down the center. It may overlap a little bit. Yes. So. Yes, I think I put the other one too close. It's okay. You'll see the finished one. It's all gonna work out. All right, here are we're gluing my pieces down. Tammy says her kid is 54 and would love this. Yes, all of my children are excited. But, I mean, who instigates Star Wars Day at my house? I do, let's be honest. I'm the one who says, come on guys, it's Star Wars Day. Put your Star Wars shirts on. So, we all, yes, can have fun with toys. All right, so I'm almost done with this piece. And then we'll see how assembling it goes. Yesterday, when I was reassembling my globe, um, it was not as easy as I had thought it was going to be. Philippa is asking where you got the pattern from. So this is a free printable on my website. My husband designed it for me. So you can go grab it, print it out. It's juliemeasures.com. And yeah, and you'll see all the photos there of our step-by-step -step process making this. And then you can print that free. Um, it's a, just a PDF file. It's three pages and you can print it out, cut it out and get ready to assemble your globe. The printable is for an eight inch globe. If you have a different size, I'm sorry. <laughs> It would probably be easier have to have a smaller globe than a larger one, um, just because trying to print something. An eight inch globe is gonna be um, the biggest thing you can print with eight and a half by 11 paper. So. Look at that, we're almost done. We've got like three little pieces left to fold down. And somehow I'm getting more twisty as we go. Yeah, it's more important to lay the paper flat than that it uh, lines up at the top. So, I said, the finished one is a little bit neater, um, but I was trying to get done and talk and do all the things at the same time. Okay. You get the idea, right? We'll let the seven-year-old play with this one. Okay. So, we need to reassemble our Death Star. And we'll see if I can figure this out today because there were some issues yesterday. So obviously our whatever dish needs to go on the top. Devin wants to know where you got the commentator from. The commentator, this is my husband who's helping today with the video. He's also the one that did the, I'm putting this washer on backwards. He's the one who designed the printable for me. It's nice having a someone with some graphic illustrating skills. And Robin is asking, what's a Death Star? A Death Star. Okay, so today is Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th, May the 4th. Okay, we like puns. Um, I did not create this holiday, just in case anyone is thinking that they're going to give me credit for that. It was not me. Um, but it is Star Wars Day, and so Star Wars fans know that the Death Star is from Star Wars. So I mentioned yesterday that this was one of the problems. Um, 
with trying to reassemble my thing. Okay, so, as I'm trying to just play around with getting the, where's my dish, there's the dish, globe back. I'm getting directions as I kind of put this together wrong because I'm thinking about the globe. I'm, my focus is all, all over the place for a second, sorry. Okay. Trying to hold all the pieces. I told you, like, I thought, oh yeah, I'll just put it back together. For some reason, this was like the hardest part. I don't know why, but it was. Trying to find that hole with the rod on the inside. So we're gonna play with this for a second and see if I can do it. If not, then I will just show you how I finished this. We might skip this part. <laughs> we'll move on. Okay, you're gonna pretend, because we all have imaginations, right? That the globe is reassembled. Because I don't know why that part is so hard. But to finish it off, the last thing I did was take some Mod Podge and kind of seal it because as you can see it kind of pulls up a little bit and especially if somebody's playing with this or even if it's just on display um, you don't want it you don't want the paper pulling up the glue stick was great because um, we just wa I just wanted it kind of tacky to put the paper down so that if I needed to pull it up and reposition, I had some freedom to do that as opposed to other kind of gluing options. But once it's all together, then I would like it to stay all together and not come apart. So I've just got a foam brush and I'm just gonna like dab it. So when I did this the other day, I really just dabbed it all over to kind of get a thick covering and then I smoothed it out and it worked really well just to seal that this top part up here and all the seams and it smoothed out some of the seams um, that had bunched up a little bit and it really just finished it all off. So I'm just going to, I don't know, kind of doing this dab thing worked really well just to put a bunch of glue down and then I could spread it. And I just did one coat um, for my finished one. You know, you could kind of see how yours is going and if you wanted to do more than one coat, um, you can always do that. Robin asked about uh, the Mod Podge smearing. I did not have any problems with it smearing. I used a laser printer to print my, to print the printable. That feels redundant to say, but to print the printable, I used a laser printer and I did not have any problems with the, um, with it smearing. My guess is you would with white glue but Mod Podge is uh, real good for this. So. Okay. So that you can kind of see. Um, it's just smoothing it all out. We'll do this section over here. And Rose asks, it, what kind of paper? So this is just standard computer paper from, yeah. Um, it's not anything whatever the standard printer paper is at the store. That's what I used. I think the answer there is the same. Uh, if it was a water base like a Elmer's glue, this would pucker up. But Mod Podge is designed for this. So, and that was one of our concerns with using Mod Podge for the initial putting down was that it might, I don't know. We just didn't, yeah, want anything to make it hooker. So I did the bottom half and now I can do the top half. And, um, you know, once you got that all, 
so you could smooth it. Um, and I'm gonna let that dry. So now you can see my finished one that is all reassembled and dry. And we have our DIY Death Star. So, spins around. Um, like I said, I really liked the silver base that this was on. Um, if yours didn't have a silver base, you might want to paint it, but it looks really great with the finished um, gray Death Star. And then you can celebrate Star Wars Day all year round. Um, have this up on a shelf, let your kids play with it if you want, you know, if they want to take it apart and just run around with the globe um, and play with it. Um, they can have lots of fun with their with their own Death Star. So thanks very much for crafting today. Um, and I think we'll have a giveaway winner uh, yeah, for the tote bag. Debbie Warren. So congratulations, Debbie, on your on your home talk giveaway um, tote bag. Um, they'll be in touch with you to get that. And make sure you tune back in later today on Home Talk um, for another live video. And I'll be back with you again next week to craft again. Um, if you remember, if you want the printable, head over to Julie Measures and grab that, print it out, and get started on your own DIY Death Star. Um, happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. And have fun crafting. See you guys.